I'm gonna start off this video by saying I do not advise cramming, but here we are. However, as much as I don't advise cramming, we're in this predicament. I was the person watching content videos the night before my GCSE science exam, still managed to get A stars and actually top of the cohort in my entire school. However, and I say this strongly, I'm gonna repeat it again, I do not advise cramming. Cramming is unsustainable. You do not wanna cram through GCSE. So if you are in year 10 and below watching this, listen and start in September. For you year 11s that have your GCSE exams in less than 30 days, probably about 20 days, 15 for some people watching this video is for you guys if you're in your 11 and you've put yourself in a situation where you need to cram here you go from february slash march most teachers say you can only go up a grade that's why they predict you about one half a grade up sometimes but using this method that i'm going to tell you i managed to jump three whole grades in biology chemistry and physics now i should warn you this video is extremely detailed i go through the day-to-day -day things that you need to do within this 20 less than days to boost your gcse science grades you may do triple science which is what i did or you may do combined but the method is exactly the same literally giving you the step-by-step -step, improve your biology chemistry and physics grades by more than the statistic says you're supposed to improve about a grade if you use this method you can improve two or three grades it is genuinely up to you so let us go too much talking okay so let's dive straight into it i had to whip out the old cse stuff the old cg flashcards like i did this is so cute to look back on nitrate ions carbonate ions off my little brother my she gave her i'll talk more about everything i will explain everything so on day one of the 20 i'm gonna say 20 days you may have less you may have more but i'm just gonna say 20 days so it would work either way because i know you actually have more than 20 so on day one you're going to target your weakest science and what are you going to do oh well, you're going to sit a paper the method goes like this you print out a biology we're just going to use biology as the first one you print out a biology paper now you're probably thinking cheryl aren't you supposed to be teaching me how to sit the exam paper that's what i'm watching this for how do i answer the question well that's exactly that how are you going to learn how to answer the exam questions if you don't do an exam start with the paper so you can show yourself especially because you're cramming you need to know what it's actually like to do a paper so no matter how much you know no matter when the last time time you revised was take the paper set a one hour 30 minute or one hour 45 minute if you do triple timer and sit the paper using common sense knowledge whatever you can remember scram get things out of your brain and answer the question if the question's like what causes cancer and the only thing you can think of is cigarette smoke just write that down and i recommend start with a paper where the gray boundaries were extremely low that year why do i say that if the grade boundaries are really low that year the paper tends to be of a higher difficulty if you start with quite a difficult paper you've shown yourself the worst way your exam could go i'm doing quotation marks because that's quite a flaky thing to say if you're doing aqa gcse science I'll put on the screen what they were you can screenshot quickly go to pmt print out that paper and sit the paper with the hardest grade boundary as you're going through the paper and you're struggling because maybe you're quite rusty on some of the topics you're going to put a circle around the topic question that you found hard so maybe the paper was all going fine until they started talking about mitosis you're going to circle that question and we're going to talk about what you do with those circled questions later so you've completed the paper and it's time to mark the paper before marking you're going to take a source so you're going to go to a source so it could be your textbook it could be save my exam notes that you've written in your book during class it can be your angie flashcards it can be your study smart flashcard whatever it is you're going to go to a source of content and in your green colored pen you're going to start writing in the question how you would answer if the notes were in your head so it's basically you're not you're not checking the mark scheme yet you're just it's like a cheat sheet you're basically adding to your information that you already had assuming that the notes were in your head what we're basically saying is theoretically if you were to learn those notes you would have answered the question like this not just the mark scheme it's about knowing how to take information and putting it in an exam format without just checking the mark scheme yet once you've done this to all of the questions you've annotated in green i'll try put an example of how your exam paper should look you've got the green of added notes not mark scheme you're going to go in with red and write the exact mark scheme answer so what was the aim of this whole first step well it was to identify your gaps and also expose yourself to what the actual exam is like people write exams and mark the paper but some people do not utilize the mark scheme properly you're going to mark the whole paper number one do not fixate on the score we're cramming here we don't really care what the percentage and score is don't be checking your score against the gray boundary nothing what i do want you to fixate on is if you had been given this paper again in two weeks would you get a hundred percent in the paper now with all the questions that you did get wrong you want to make um it can be on notes it can be on notion it can be on a planner it can be 
um i think i have my old flashcards it can be in flashcard for is basically write the wrong answers somewhere make sure your wrong answers are somewhere for you to look back on you're not making the same mistake twice the best thing i recommend is basically putting your wrong answers into anki but then again we are cramming so that's time consuming you just want to make sure that your wrong answers are somewhere easily accessible so you've identified the gaps in your knowledge on that day one on day two and for day three you're going to repeat the exact same thing with chemistry and with physics you're going to sit a paper use the notes, mark it, circle topic. So once you've identified the gaps in your knowledge, remember earlier I asked you to circle the questions. From those circled questions, you're gonna pair it up with the spec and see what topics you're weaker at. So now you're making a struggle list. If you're too lazy to go to the spec, if you go to the beginning of any textbook, they literally have the spec. This is basically the spec points outline i'm gonna do that next step is to fill in the gaps you found from doing that paper how do we fill in gaps in knowledge as quick as we can we're talking two week time schedules here we're trying to know things quickly so what you're going to do are active methods and um, another question i get quite frequently is like do i have enough time to type up flashcards and stuff like that you don't actually need to there is quizlet pre-made flashcards on there uh pmt have the flashcards for every single biology chemistry and physics topic subtopic they have the flashcards for it and if you're lucky maybe your friend can share their anki with you their study smarter with you you don't need to waste time making flashcards anymore there are flashcards out there the way you're going to fill in your gaps is by actively recalling the thing. obviously if you don't know something you're going to need to put it in your brain before you actively recall it out and that is where things like seneca cognito and free science lessons come in free science lessons is good for cramming I don't think I've actually seen him do a video longer than three minutes. The guy speaks fast. He breaks down the topics quickly. So if you're looking for quick, quick little topics that you're missing, maybe you just don't know a bit of astrophysics, like a little bit of space, you just need to check. But the way to fill in your gaps is by actively recalling. So any sort of quizzing, that's why I said Cognito, they have quizzes. Seneca, quizzes. Study Smart, Anki, they all quiz you on your knowledge. Day one, two, and three, you just sat the papers and found your struggle topic. And then day four, you circle back to your struggle topics and start to tackle them. You find that you do all of this, days four, four, five, and six, and you're on day seven, eight, and nine, and you have time. You're, I recommend you go to physics and maths tutor and do questions per topic. I want to quickly emphasize here that doing a past paper doesn't necessarily cover your back for every single topic because not every single topic appears in every single past paper. Hence why this part about topic questions is really important because for the things that don't come up in your papers, you still need to be ready to be asked them in your real exam. Go and break down each topic with exam questions per topic. I hope that made sense. My biology teacher kindly made us something called a slop booklet and all it was is that each a human nervous system and stuff she printed out the questions per topic for us but this is what you're going to do you'll go to pmt and you're going to attempt practice questions and then we had some mark schemes looking back y'all i ate those papers uh i'm seeing six out of six three out of three done a paper you've seen the problems you filled in the problem but you're not ready yet on your second or third time of revisiting the topics that you made the struggle list on where you'll recap those problem topics at the start of your session and you're going to sit another paper and do the same process circle the questions you had a problem with go over the paper with green and then red with mark scheme write down the questions you got wrong somewhere store it up. then go over to your flashcards go over to your quizzes and start quizzing yourself and if you don't know go and fill in your knowledge so a quick video well, however you take in your content if you really want a grade nine always do topic questions because these are in exam form where sometimes flashcards cannot be in exam form that's up to you all my flashcards are in exam form so depending on how many times you repeat this cycle is depending on how much your grade is going to increase all the things you've learned you need to recap them every two days or every three days like continuously this is a cycle you I'm going to finish off this video with my final tips for GCSE science. The first thing I'm going to say, this tip right here, life changing. I think I learned it in year 10. I remember I had a teacher called Miss Ibrahim. If she's watching this, the goat. And ever since then, I've never stopped doing it. And even I've carried on this tip all the way into A-level. And I noticed that that tip is what really has saved me in my A-level sciences and saved me even more in my GCSE science. I'm looking back at my... Uh, my exam papers and I did it during GCSE. You can see that, I missed the word there, but can you see those two dots? 
That is the tip. The tip is for GCSE science, I strongly recommend you write in bullet point. If you're familiar with mark schemes, now all my mark scheme bandits know, if you've seen enough mark schemes, you know the mark scheme does not write in full sentences. The mark scheme does not use commas and full stops. The mark scheme doesn't want full. The mark scheme, nine times out of 10, has like two words. So my question for you as the person writing the paper, why are you writing full sentences in a GCSE science paper? Full sentences in physics. Even if it's a method, even, even if it's a required practical, why are you writing full sentences? Unless they say spag will be assessed. How does transcription work? Just write it in bullet point. Make the examiner's job easier. Give the answer to the examiner right on the paper. For three years of my life, I've been doing bullet point and been getting high marks. Not only would it speed up your exam technique, it also gives the examiner no way to miss mark you. If the mark scheme requires you to say diffusion instead of move for the keywords and make sure you put them in your answers all the time. The one thing I say for physics, physics is more equations, there's less content to know. You need to do loads of physics past papers, loads of physics practice questions to get a higher grade in physics. My last for you guys, um, more so to do with your timing and the days, three days away from your exam, two days, one day, when the exam's the night before, you don't want to do your weakest topics the night before the exam. They're going to be in your short-term memory, okay? The things you're strongest at can come as a quick little refresher near the end. The things you're weak at need to be targeted at the start of your 20 days. Okay, so that is all for my GCSE science video. If you have more questions, comment them down below. I'll see you all in my next video. Jesus Christ loves every single one of you. Bye. Oh.